the shocking truth about the carnivore diet that you need to know. Now, let's be clear. I have nothing against a carnivore diet as an elimination diet. In fact, some of my patients use it on a short-term basis to break a cycle of gut inflammation and leaky gut. And it does support their gut health because it removes all lectin-containing compounds from the diet. And let's be clear, plants do not want you to eat them. Even so-called friendly plants that appear on the plant paradox diet. But in some people, their gut is so damaged that even the defense compounds of simple plants like romaine lettuce or broccoli is enough to cause damage to people's health. I'll give you a famous example that I've talked about before. Uh, years ago, uh, we got a uh, Nutribullet blender and my wife decided to make a kale smoothie. Why not? Kale's great for you. She blended the kale smoothie and I drank it on the way to work. And about an hour later, I was in the bathroom with blowout diarrhea. What the heck happened? Well, I can tolerate kale, which is bitter, which has a lot of plant defense compounds, more bitter, more better when I eat it whole or cooked and it's digested slowly. But when we take raw kale and pulverize it, all of a sudden all of those potentially mischievous compounds were hitting my gut wall and my gut said, holy cow, we gotta get rid of this stuff. And quite frankly, I haven't had a kale smoothie since. Some of my patients are so sensitive to these plant compounds that I have them with irritable bowel or leaky gut, nuke their vegetables, cook them forever, pressure cook them to destroy these compounds. But even that, in some people, is not enough. And we've seen success by eliminating all of these compounds. In fact, I've written before that a lot of these diets, like the Adkins diet, like the uh, Drinking Man's diet, which was a very low carbohydrate diet, basically eliminated these plant compounds. And that's one of the reasons they work for so many people. So maybe I was the father of the carnivore diet, as some people have accused me. But before we say, well, if plants are so bad for you, all of us should be eating a carnivore diet, not so fast. First of all, there's absolutely zero evidence of long-living people eating a carnivore diet. A society that follows a carnivore diet does not exist. And one would think with so much experimentation with food around the world for millennia, if a carnivore diet was as good as its proponents say it is for long-term health, surely we should have been able to find a society that has long-term great health on a carnivore diet. And that simply does not exist. In fact, looking at areas of the world that have extreme longevity, the blue zones and other zones that I've talked about in my book, all of these areas have one thing in common. And no, it's not that they eat beans and rice or grains. Sorry, that's absolutely not true. All of these areas in general, eat a very low animal protein diet. And as I've written about in all my books, that's what appears to be the major driver of this longevity. Now, the other thing, if you're going to embark on a carnivore diet, let's be careful about our food choices 
that are available by eating animal products. First of all, there is a sugar molecule in beef, lamb, and pork called NU5GC. That sugar molecule is distinctly different from the sugar molecule that lines the blood vessels of chicken, fish, and us. We have an antibody that can be developed when we're exposed to NU5GC containing foods that we will attack our own blood vessels with that antibody. So we don't want an autoimmune attack on our blood vessels. And there is considerable experimental evidence that one of the reasons that red meat promotes heart disease is actually from this molecule NU5GC prompting an autoimmune attack on our blood vessels. The other thing that's concerning is that tumor cells can use NU5GC to hide from our immune system, to cloak themselves. Now here's the deal. You and I do not produce NU5GC. So the only place a tumor cell could get NU5GC is for you to eat it in beef, lamb, or pork. And that's why there is an association. Now just remember, association does not mean causation, but there is an association between red meat eating and cancer, particularly colon cancer and even breast cancer. So our species became completely different one of the reasons we think is because of this new 5AC mutation. Okay, so you're not going to eat beef, lamb, and pork. That's pretty easy. I'll eat chicken instead. That has new 5AC. Well, not so fast. First of all, most commercially available chicken is incredibly high in lectins and antibiotics. Now, wait a minute. But lectins, I thought lectins were in plants. And that's true. Lectins are primarily in plant foods. Well, you've heard the phrase, you are what you eat. But more importantly, you are what the thing you're eating ate. So if you feed chickens lectin-containing foods like corn and soybeans, which is what most chicken feed is made of, the lectins in those corn and soybeans will become part of the chicken meat. And it's always amazing to me when I have people with tough autoimmune diseases that we take away their organic free range chicken and their autoimmune disease finally abates. And it's because those organic free range chickens were being fed organic corn and soybeans. So what can you do? Try to find pastured chickens. But even that is troublesome. Uh, as you know, we've had Farmer Dan from lectinlightchicken.com on this podcast. And Farmer Dan from Texas has perfected lectin-free chickens using lectin-free feed in his pastured chickens. And I'm a huge fan of his. Why else? Well, even though it is technically illegal now to give antibiotics to chickens, there's a catch. Chickens can be kept in a warehouse with 100,000 chickens. And they're not in cages. They actually hold themselves up by being crammed in there. Legally, you can keep those chickens in that warehouse as long as you open a door to the outside for five minutes every 24 hours. And the chicken has, in theory, the ability to go outside. And that actually is the definition of free range chicken. 
the law, which was passed in uh, 2007, actually allows you to feed chickens regular grain, not organic, if, you, if the price of organic food goes twice as high as regular, you can switch the chickens to regular food and still label it organic because you meant well. Now, even though you, it is illegal to feed chickens antibiotics, if the veterinarian, who of course is paid for by the chicken company, thinks that one of those chickens in 100,000 chickens is sick, you're allowed to give the entire flock antibiotics to treat that one sick chicken. In fact, looking at chickens who have supposedly never been given antibiotics, in some studies, 60% of those chickens have antibiotics in their flesh, even though it's illegal to give them antibiotics certified as antibiotic free. There are interesting studies showing that urinary tract infections in women can be directly traced to contaminated chicken meat. Antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria in chicken can lead to foodborne illness. Almost once a month we hear of a chicken related foodborne illness. About one in six salmonella infections and one in three campylobacter infections are due to antibiotic resistant strains of those bacteria in the chicken you're eating. Watch, be very careful when it says no antibiotics label. That is not your assurance that these chickens have not been given antibiotics look for pasture-aged chicken. Know your farmer. Ask your farmer at the farmer's market, what do you feed your chickens? The correct answer is nothing. They go out in the fields and eat bugs and grass, which is what they're supposed to do. Okay, well, what about eggs? That could be a potential for the carnivore diet. Well, if you're going to do that, again, look for pasture-raised or at least omega-3 eggs, and preferably look for omega-3 eggs that have been fed algae. Uh, there are a number on the market. Uh, but the deal with eggs, in my humble opinion, is eggs should be a vehicle to get olive oil into your mouth. And interestingly enough, eat primarily the yolks. That's where all the good stuff is and look for the really bright, intensely orange-colored yolks. That's a guarantee, pretty much, that those chickens have been outside eating bugs. Give the whites to your dog. Your dog will love you for it. Interestingly enough, about two and a half eggs a day meet all the protein requirements for your needs. How about fish? Please eat wild fish only preferably smaller fish like sardines, like mullet. Uh, the best sea seafoods that you can get, wild-caught salmon. Alaska salmon, by law, has to be wild-caught. If you see the words organic salmon, run the other way. They didn't follow the salmon around in the ocean to see if they were eating organically. Those are farm-raised salmon that have been fed organic corn and soybeans. So just because it says organic or Nordic salmon or Scottish organic salmon or Canadian salmon run the other way, that's not what you're looking for. Try to stay away from larger fish. The people that I see with high mercury levels in their urine or their blood in my practice are dentists or sushi eaters. Uh, these are not your friends. Swordfish, tilefish, grouper has high levels of mercury and try to avoid these things. And naturally, if you're having fish and chips or fried calamari, that's not part of the carnivore diet. Sorry about that. Okay, so why do people get good results with the carnivore diet? Well, it's because you're eliminating lectins. But all of my carnivore diet patients, when we look at their inflammatory markers, 
over time, their inflammatory markers, markers of vessel flexibility, begin to get worse and worse. So short term, to fix a problem with an affront of plant compounds against your gut, I've got nothing wrong with that. But long term, I can tell you in my patient population, it looks like a recipe for a disaster. And again, if this was such a good idea, we should be able to find a society with incredibly long-lived healthy people who have adopted a carnivore diet. I'm sorry, they just can't be found. Finally, just remember, as in general, and I agree with Dr. Walter Longo with this, the less animal protein that you can get, the better. And when I ask my patients to reduce animal protein, I see dramatic re reductions in a blood marker called insulin-like growth factor. And as a general rule, the lower your insulin-like growth factor, the longer you live, the longer you live well, and quite frankly, the less chance of cancer developing. So why not go after that? So the, is a carnivore diet a great idea? Well, as the ultimate elimination diet, I have nothing wrong with a carnivore diet in the short term. But once you fix the underlying problem, and you know how to do that if you've been watching this podcast, once you fix that problem, it's time to wean yourself from the carnivore diet. And if you're going to do the carnivore diet, please try to think about small fish, try to think about shellfish, like clams, like scallops, like oysters, uh, like mussels, and small fish like sardines. That's the safest way to practice a carnivore diet. I think you're gonna love this one. Fun fact, the amount of lithium in your local water may have a positive benefit on your brain health through the years. 